Hey guys, so today we're checking out the Red Rock 4x4 approach front bumper with the LED lights fitting all 2018 and newer JL Wranglers. So if you're in search for some protection as well as functionality to the front end of your JL at a pretty affordable price point, this option by Red Rock is going to be a great choice to take a look at. So this is gonna be for a mid-width front bumper. You're gonna get a lot of protection in the front, especially with this bull bar for the grill and on the sides with this steel construction. Now what I really like about this is that even though it does drop down a little lower than some other options on the site, this is still going to have angled up ends for you guys out there that are concerned about your approach angles. And this is also going to provide a little bit of underbody protection. Now that's also going to cover up the lower frame horns on the JL, which is going to clean up the look of the front end of your Wrangler while achieving an aggressive look with the heavy duty styling. Now, like I mentioned before, this is also going to have some very functional features. You're getting a winch plate as well as D-ring mounts and D-rings for some functional recovery off-road if you ever get into a sticky situation. And this is also going to have multiple light mounting points. Not to mention, this is going to come with LED fog lights integrated into the front bumper, making it perfect for somebody who's looking for an upgrade in fog lights while also upgrading the functionality of the front end of their Jeep as well. Now that's going to help you out with some extra visibility, especially for you guys out there that want to upgrade from that halogen light. And overall, it's just going to complete the look of the heavy duty aesthetic. Now, as far as price goes, this is going to be pretty affordable for a heavy duty mid-width front bumper at roughly $550. Now, if we take a look at some less expensive choices, those are usually gonna have a more simplistic design and they may not include the LED lights like this option does. Now, on the other hand, some more expensive choices are usually gonna be a little bit larger of a design like a full width front bumper or even a standard width front bumper, giving you some more protection and that they may include some extra bells and whistles. However, in my personal opinion, I think if you're looking for something that's very functional, has that upgrade in lighting as well as protection, then this choice is gonna be right up your alley. Now, install is gonna be a two out of three wrenches on the difficulty meter, just because we have to do a little bit of wiring with those fog lights. However, it is pretty simple and you're just gonna need some very basic hand tools to get the job done. So speaking of that install, let's jump into that now. Tools that I used for my install were an impact wrench, a trim removal tool, a 3 8 inch drive and quarter inch drive ratchet, a socket set ranging from 18 millimeters down to 7 millimeters, a 3 inch extension, flathead screwdriver, and a wire cutter, stripper, and crimper tool. Our first step is going to be to remove our upper splash shield. So for this, you're going to need a flathead screwdriver or a trim removal tool as well as a 7 millimeter socket. So we're gonna start up at the top. We're gonna have six pop clips up at the front here and then two on the frame rails that we'll need to remove. So I'm using a flathead screwdriver for this. You can also, again, use a trim removal tool if they are being a bit stubborn. Now on the back on some models, you will have a seven millimeter bolt that's holding in the back of the splash guard. So I'm gonna take a seven millimeter socket and remove those. Now you can do the same thing for the other side and remove our splash shield. Our next step is underneath the Jeep, we're gonna take off our lower splash shield to access the bolts that are holding on our bumper. I'm gonna use a trim removal tool to remove the clips that are holding in the front of our splash shield. And then we can move to the back to remove the two screws that are holding in the back of our splash shield. Next, with an eight millimeter socket, we can remove those two screws in the back. And at this point, our splash guard will be fully disconnected. So we can just pull it back and put it out of the way. Now we can remove our skid plate behind our splash shield using a 16 millimeter socket to remove the two bolts on either side. Once they're removed, we can push up on the skid plate and fully remove it. Next, we can remove the eight nuts that are holding the bumper onto the frame. I'm gonna use an 18 millimeter socket as well as a uh, three inch extension to give myself a little bit of clearance. These are gonna be on the outside and the inside of either frame horn.
Now we can repeat that for the other six studs. So this may be a little bit difficult to see, but we can repeat that on the inside of the frame horn as well with the same 18 millimeter deep socket. So we can repeat that process on the passenger outside frame horn, but we're also gonna have our fog light wiring harness here as well. So we do need to disconnect that. Just need to press down on the tab and pull back. And then we can disconnect the hardware from the bumper. After everything's disconnected, we can wiggle the bumper back off of the frame horns and fully remove it. Before we jump into the install, I wanted to stop down and give you guys a comparison on our new Red Rock 4x4 front bumper in comparison to our factory one and what benefits that you're going to see out of this new heavy duty design. Now right off the bat you can tell that this is actually going to be a little bit shorter than our factory setup and it's going to have angled up ends on the side which will help you out with approach angles while you're off road. Speaking of off road, this is going to be a lot more heavy duty as it says in the name. This will be made of a steel plate and tube construction which will be able to take a lot more more abuse than the factory plastic setup. Now that's also going to have a textured black wrinkle powder coat on top which is going to help you with a more aggressive look to the front end of your JL but it's also going to protect that steel underneath from any rust or corrosion. Now on top of construction this is also going to have some functionality benefits that are a big plus when it comes to the factory setup. You're getting two welded D-ring mounts on the front which are going to help you out with recovery if you ever get into a sticky situation off-road. Those are going to be a lot more efficient than your factory tow hooks considering that they're a closed unit. They're going to be a little bit safer when it comes to recovery. Now speaking of recovery, you're also getting a winch plate that's capable of holding a winch with up to a 12,000 pound pulling capacity and you're also getting some grill protection up top with that tubular construction and that's something that your front bumper is unable to offer you from the factory. Now what I really like about this front bumper is the fact that it comes with LED fog lights already mounted up inside of the bumper. Those are going to be a big step up from the factory halogen lights helping you out with visibility when you are out on the trail or even just driving around on the street. This is also going to come with multiple mounting points for extra auxiliary lighting if you do want to build off of that and add some more lighting to your rig. So that's really going to wrap it up. So enough about these two side by side. Let's go ahead and install our new bumper. What we can do now is lift up our bumper and place the studs into our frame. This is going to be set up similar to how our factory bumper is installed. It's going to have four studs for either side. What we can do now is secure our bumper down. We're going to be provided with flat washers, lock washers, and nuts to secure the stud down. Now I want to make sure that all of our hardware is on before we tighten it down but we will be tightening this down with a 16 millimeter deep socket. So now we can secure the rest of these six studs. Now that we have all of our hardware attached, we can tighten it down with a 16 millimeter deep socket. I'm also using a three inch extension just to give myself a little bit of room.
What we can do now is wire up our fog lights. Now, depending on how you want to actuate your fog lights is going to depend on how you wire them. What I'm gonna do is wire them into our factory fog light wiring harness. I already have a positive and a negative lead here spliced into the factory wires. Now you can run this to a 12 volt switch. You will need a wiring harness in order to do that, or you could just wire it to a switch and then to the battery. However, what I'm going to do is extend the leads over from the driver side fog light connected to the passenger side fog light and then put a speed connector to connect to our factory wiring harness. So once they're routed and have these speed connectors on them, what we can do is plug them in. After everything's plugged in and tightened down, then you should be all set to go. Last but not least, we can install our D-rings. And same thing for the other side. So that's gonna wrap it up for my review and install. Make sure you like and subscribe, and for more videos and products like this, always keep it right here at extremeterrain.com.